Nicosia. I think you recognize the two of us, Steve Clinch and Ellen Cook, representatives of the Kingston Public Library Foundation. Uh, I'm the current president, last year or so, and Ellen, one of the founding members of the group and president for the prior five-year period. So both of us have had an opportunity to spend some time and and uh, observe you in your role and what you do and have done for our library and our community. And I can tell you, uh, based on our conversations with the rest of the foundation, you certainly have uh, our admiration and uh, wholehearted support in, in anything and everything that you have done and have tried to accomplish for our library. You know, as you know, we do meet basically once a month uh, to discuss a variety of issues in front of us and a variety of ways that we can help the library with funding and volunteerism. And occasionally, we have the rare opportunity of having these meetings with you not present. And in those meetings, we talk about you. Your ears are probably burning, but one of the things we talk about is how can we, in some way, recognize Sia Stewart? How can we create some sort of an enduring recognition for what this woman has given our community and our library? So a lot of ideas floated around on various occasions, but um, for me, the best discussion and the best idea is from Ellen. So Ellen, could you talk a little bit about your idea? Sure, when we were trying to think of something that we could give to you that would really mean something and be long-term and ongoing, and we all know that you know accepting gifts is not your strong suit. <laughs> You're much more of a giver than a taker and trying to think of something that would really be meaningful to you. I remembered when, first of all, when, when I was executive director of a nonprofit organization in another area, um, like you, we in like the Kingston Public Library, we always had trouble trying to find funding for staff training. And when you're working in the government sector or for a nonprofit, you know better than anyone how difficult that can be and also what a difference it can mean for somebody to get an opportunity to go to a workshop, um, any type of training. It's one thing that can recharge batteries. Uh, staff are not in it for the money or they wouldn't be where they are, but something that where they have a chance to share with other people doing the same thing can make such a difference. So we decided that the best thing that we could do to thank you and have it ongoing is to set up a scholarship fund for staff training. So this will be the first $2,900, $100 for each year that you've worked for the Kingston Public Library uh, that will go into a staff training fund and it will be replenished on an annual basis going forward so that Mike as director um, can decide how this money should be spent, uh, whether people apply or whatever. You may have some input for him on you know how you think this might work best or maybe even help him decide. I you know that that's not our part. Ours is just to set it up in a way of saying thank you so much for all you have done. We've been through some trying years and you kept us all going. It really, it means so much to all of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, a couple of other points that I would make is that I've seen situations where um, there was a uh, an opportunity for staff to mm -hmm. attend some sort of 
a fair or a seminar where you were quite prepared to come up with this on your own money uh, if there wasn't funding in other ways. And I think that's, again, uh, a, a way of us helping for the long-term future with with this kind of uh, a gift, this kind of a of a uh, uh, a grant, and I and I would say this, it's going to be the first twenty nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. every year that the foundation puts aside. So hopefully mm -hmm. we can have this last and endure for many years into the future. As the C S Stewart. Staff Scholarship Fund. Right. Now, do we want to say Sia or do we want to say Lucia? <laughs> I think everybody knows her as Sia. Exactly. Sia Stewart. All right. Well, uh, I hope this is, pleases you uh, as much as it certainly pleases all of us at the Foundation. When Ellen came up with this idea, we all just absolutely said, this is exactly what we should be doing. And I hope that uh, it gives you some joy and some sense that... Uh, in other ways, this this library and its and its staff will endure long into the future. Thank you, Sia. Thank you. Sia, thank you for all you've given to the town of Kingston in your 29 years of service. Your leadership at the Kingston Public Library has elevated programming the library's visibility within the community, and you've earned the respect and admiration of your peers and patrons alike. You've forged lifelong relationships throughout the community, and you've advocated for the needs of staff and residents, reminding us all that it's not just about books, it's about the people. You've supported efforts ranging from the South Shore Locavores, an introduction of new technology, to the newly renovated teen room and community events at the Adams Center, the Council on Aging, and my personal favorite, a craft beer event in the library parking lot. In doing these things and so much more, you've changed lives and made lifelong supporters out of many of us. I've been fortunate to know Sia all the way back to the years when I was on the Finance Committee through now being a selectman. And I have been able to know who Sia really is throughout all those years. It, you know, you look at the individual and then you look at what makes a good uh, manager in the town of Kingston and, and they all blend into Sia whether it's integrity, honesty, uh, ethical, empathy, and from a work ethic, and you can't find many more better than, than Sia. Her heart is in it, she has passion for what she does, and I'm proud to say that I have personally known one library director in my lifetime, and that's Sia Stewart. Uh, she will always be the one and only library director for me for the town of Kingston. And Sia, best of luck, you deserve it. You had the courage to come forward and think outside the box. Um, the library's an intricate part of the town of Kingston. Uh, though sometimes it doesn't get the um, noise it deserves, but you have a lot of people behind it and it couldn't have happened without you. And thank you from all of us. Hi, Sia. Thank you for everything. I've worked for you and with you for longer than I've worked for anyone else for over half of my career as an archivist. And you've supported my work, my schemes, and my wild ideas. You even pursued Rick's dream of our boat trip when I would have given up. You model kindness, patience, compromise, and how to take the long view. And you gave me the space to understand why these things were so important. Thank you for all this and more. Have a great retirement. See ya. I'm representing the Friends of the Kingston Public Library. Uh, the current president, Sandy Underhill, long-term treasurer, Dale Foley, and uh, past president, Gail Metcalf, 
as well as the executive committee and your many volunteers. As I understand it, uh, there wouldn't be a Friends without you having re uh, made that possible way back in the 90s. Apparently, the uh, woman, as Gail told me, her name was Lindsay Beardsley, over in the other old library building. She uh, left, and the friends dissolved and were dormant. Uh, you got the ball rolling again, and uh, convinced Gail to be president, and gave her some resources, the names of some other people who might be friends. And uh, she was the president for over 10 years. Uh, she said that you were indispensable uh, as a liaison uh, with the trustees and, and with the staff. Uh, and that was the same during my tenure. And Sandy confirms this today. Uh, we have a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, you have been our mentor, our advisor, our supporter, our facilitator uh, for all these years, and uh, amazing that you were able to find time during your schedule to attend all of our meetings and brief us on the various uh, factors and things that were going on at state level, at local level, and with the library and the budget. Uh, we really appreciated that and uh, we felt like we were part of it all. You brought us many projects and from your staff. I'm sure you filtered some of them. <laughs> and uh, other items that were going to be of benefit to the community and uh, made us uh, a part of the, really a part of the community, uh, the library community. Space has always been a, uh, a problem in the library, uh, but you were kind enough to give us uh, enough space for sorting and, and organizing the books for our book sales and for on the carts. And this was our main source of revenue uh, that made it available. That made it possible for us to uh, fund the museums, museum discounts, give substantial discounts, and uh, all of the various uh, electronics that the you know, your patrons needed, uh, training for the staff, and uh, children's programs and teens programs. And this made us all very happy. Uh, we wanted to dedicate something uh, in your honor for the service you've given to the library and the community. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to be installing this niche, this reading niche for children, uh, right in the children's room, where when you come in, there it is, and uh, we hope that a kid can find a real snuggly place to uh, sit and read. The dedication will say, the Friends of the Kingston Public Library have donated this reading space in honor of Sia Stewart and her many years of dedication to our library. Thank you, and cheers, and uh, we'll miss you. But we know you've trained the staff and your successor to the same high standards that we've experienced over the years. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Sia. My family moved to town in 93, and we quickly became uh, users of the library and friends with all of the staff. Eight years later, my neighbor, Margaret Warnsman, was stepping down on her 90th birthday as a trustee for the Kingston Public Library. 
And I was lucky enough to become appointed to that position until the annual town meeting. Over that time, I served with approximately 22 other library trustees. And you have definitely made it easy for us. Um, I'd like to figure out a great analogy to describe your time working for the library, but I also want one that's everyone can relate to. So I came up with the three little pigs. You did not build our library of straw. You did not build our library of sticks. You definitely built our library of bricks. And that's literal since we have a brick library, but it's also a great analogy to the time that I've had to work with you. Sia, you and your staff, our library staff, have always put services to our residents above all else. You, as the library director, have modeled working hard without looking like is hard work. You filled in in all of the public service roles at the circulation desk to see what the joys and struggles are there, at the reference desk, in the children's room. And one of my fondest memories is you reading The Little Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly to my children and I. It was just so animated and so fun. We, the trustees, working with you as library director, have created a full-time town archivist working out of the library. Before Brad Norman was hired as facility manager, you as director, the staff, and the trustees worked as hard as we could to keep the building functioning in all the possible ways. And I think we've done a great job. When we ran out of space for the offerings we needed to give to the town, we coordinated with the Council on Aging and the Rec Department to unify our programming schedule so that we removed redundancy and we better utilized the space available to all so that we could use the meeting room at the Senior Center for Library Book Talks, which were very well attended and I think drew a lot of people to the library and to the town. Uh, you worked pretty hard on creating the local boards program that went on for many, many years. One of the things that I admire the most in you is your ability to create teams, to reach out to the community and find people who have things to offer and bringing them to the town through the library program and through other town programs. In, 19, oh, excuse me, in 2009, uh, together we created a foundation so that the library had a more reliable form of fundraising. And again, your connections into the town recruited people who were not only active community citizens, but very active library supporters. And that's been a very successful program for the library and for the town. And then, I don't know how much I can say about all of the work we did to find grants, to put together committees working with the selectmen, to expand the footprint of the library so that we could meet the needs of the town and the services that they deserved. It was a lot of work, a lot of accomplishments, a lot of frustrations, and I'm sorry that, that I'm as sorry as you and probably many of the town members that it didn't come to fruition, but you have always worked to put library services for the town through the support of the trustees as a priority, and I thank you for that. And I'm thinking Everybody else thinks you think. This quilt is presented to C.F. Stewart in recognition of her 29 years of dedicated service to the Kingston Public Library. The numerous trustees who served during your distinguished tenure of active and innovative leadership are privileged and grateful. I wanted to give you a little bit of history about why I chose this particular block for your quilt. This is called the log cabin block and it's one of the most classic and versatile blocks in the quilter's world. And those are two words that I would use to describe you, classic and versatile. This block has a history dating back to the early 1800s. It was believed that the Union quilters made this block, the log cabin, in honor of President Lincoln who grew up in a log cabin and that they made quilts 
out of this block and then sold them to raise money for the troops. This quilt also played a significant role in the Underground Railroad. So if this quilt was hung outside on a line outside of a house and the center square was black, that signaled to slaves that that was a safe house and that they could hide there. In creating the block, the quilters decided that the center would always be red because that's the heart of the home or the hearth of the home that it represented fire because it was always important in those days to have a fire going in your home. And then the strips around it signify the logs in a cabin. And so when I was create, thinking of a block to create a quilt for you, the log cabin came to mind because in my mind, you were the heart of our library and you built the library and the community around you. So I hope you enjoy this quilt very, very much. Hi, Sia. It's me, Kathy Lenatra. I wanted to present to you a citation today. It's a bittersweet day for me. I will miss you terribly. You've grown to be such a special friend over the years. But today, I want to congratulate you and offer you a citation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Lucia Stewart for 29 years of dedication to and the stewardship of the Kingston Public Library and the community it serves. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. And it's signed by Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo and your favorite legislator, Kathleen Arlenatra. We will keep in touch and I will miss you. Hi, Sia. Bill Alberti. Um, trying to pay some respect to you on your, on your upcoming uh, retirement. And uh, I'm so happy for you. And I'm so proud of the job you've done for all of us here at the library and for the community. Um, so I have a few things, a few reminders of times that you had at the library. Uh, I remember the day you discovered that the library was the tallest building in our town because it had the most stories. <laughs> um, retired teacher Russ Garland one day, I was in there and I saw him go up to you and, and uh, he's a sci retired science teacher. He was asking for a book on science and you handed him a book on helium and he couldn't put it down. <laughs> Carol Bolse, she asked you if you had any books on comedy and you said, that's a funny question. Ellen Cook asked you for a book on joy. And you said, I'm so glad you asked that. It makes me happy. I asked you if the library had any materials on exaggeration. And you said to me, that's the strangest question I have ever heard in the history of all libraries in the world. Did you ever realize uh, that uh, I have a lot of lame jokes? I bet you do now. <laughs> then there was the time when you were asleep, it was about midnight, and you get a call. And a gentleman is asking you, what time does the library open? You said, sir, the library opens at 10 a.m. And why are you calling me in the middle of the night to find out when you can get into the library? And he said, I'm not calling to get into the library. I'm calling to get out. Now, that being said, of course, that was a joke, and I made it up. But I happen to know from Vanessa that there really was a situation that you did get a call after hours from the Kingston police. And they said, we got a phone call from someone. It's trapped in the library parking lot and they can't get out. You were totally confused. We all know the Kingston Public Library parking lot. There's an entrance, there's an exit, there's no barriers. So you went to check it out and the police showed up and said, the call came in from Kingston, New York. True story. I uh, wrote a poem for your retirement. I was asked by the foundation to, to write a poem and I was honored to do it. Uh, wasn't an easy job because I was trying to find people I could interview and get some dirt on you for the poem and I failed. But I did speak with 10 people. 
Uh, and these people, their adjectives about you are in the poem. I spoke with Tom Coulter. I spoke with Vinny DiMacito. I spoke with Mary Ann Driscoll. I spoke with Ellen Cook. I spoke with Janet DeLeo. I spoke with Vanessa, Brian McWilliams, Susan Woodworth, Jennifer Harris, and Dr. Phil Wade. So they all gave me great kudos about you. No dirt, nothing negative. It was quite boring, actually. But I'm happy to uh, read the poem to you and uh, express my great gratitude for the things you've done for me, allowing us to start the Jones River Writers, uh, allowing me to run workshops on art and poetry, to do poetry readings, uh, allowing me to display the 9-11 collage that I had made on 9-11 for 9-11 anniversaries. Uh, you've been so cooperative with everything, the cultural grants, and uh, such a hard worker. Uh, so the pieces in the poem, as I said, are coming from at least 10 people I've interviewed and others that have given me adjectives. So here it goes. On the occasion of retirement of the Kingston Library Directress, Sia, beyond words. When asked to add my participation in honoring a woman of great reputation, I start this poem in anticipation because Sia Stewart invites alliteration. She's slight and strong, savvy and smart. She made staff support a virtual art. Skilled and spirited, a bit soft-spoken, her defensive community could never be broken. She's a daughter, a sister, even a mother, a grandmom too, who loves to smother. She's lived in very interesting places, like Marshfield, Duxbury, and the African Oasis. She's an honor scholar of Marshfield High, graduated Smith and Simmons. My, oh my. She's locavore crunchy, keeps herself fit, hikes, kayaks, even can knit. Sings soprano and alto and plays the guitar. Choirs recruit her from both near and far. A supporter of causes and peaceful protests, a tireless worker so deserving of a rest. Enthusiastic and so very kind, a remarkable friend, not easy to find. Challenges never seem to sap her. She just turned to the library's very next chapter. A writer and a reader of grants and great books, she created a teen room and computer tech nooks. Directress of libraries, the sole job she's had. She leaves us a legacy that isn't half bad. Just short 30 years of great dedication She's surely deserving of our admiration, and needless to say, a standing ovation. See ya. Good luck in your retirement. Many happy years.